and I'm going to pass in that command. Okay? Cool. So th I've done all three now. I have defined my VCD, I've registered my VCD up here, and now I have handled the voice command itself. I've handled what it is that's actually going to happen. And those are the three steps. You saw it in C Sharp, and you saw it in JavaScript, and later in the course today, you're going to see the finishing of the Command Monkey project. We're going to see the monkey? We're going to see the monkey. Wow. Yeah, he's here today. See, there's no, <clears throat> I don't know if you expected these enterprise Contoso demos, but today we're crawling through dungeons and making monkeys dance. Yeah, you didn't expect the monkey, did you? No. 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 <laughs> okay, well, we, let's go ahead and uh, look at our last section here, and that is the localization of our app for all of our relevant languages. Now, I'm going to show pretty much the same slide that Nick showed earlier, because it's the same 15 languages that are supported, only I grayed out Korean, because like he mentioned, that's only available on Windows. 8.1, so it's not Correct. on the phone. Okay, but those are the languages that you can support. And I'm not going to walk all the way through the example, but the long and short of how to create alternate languages is this. You create a different command set. So those command sets mapped one, map one to one to a different language. And you can see that for the English, or for the first command set that we created, it is not only English, but it's English US. So it's a specific culture. And if we wanted to create one for French French, Sorry, this is not Canadian French. This is French French. Yeah. Then we would use for fur. Yeah. There's no. There's no default. There's no support for French Canadian. We have to make do with the French from France. A French. French. It's okay. We understand that. You can get it. But they don't understand us. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard that's the way it works. Okay. So as you can see, adding different languages is not that difficult. And I right. would say, man, it's hugely important. It is. And it's not that difficult because there's not a lot of commands and words that you need to get translations for here. It's not like you're trying to translate an app full of content. You're just translating the commands that get a person into the app, let alone the fact that your whole app should support multiple languages. Yeah, but it's also very powerful because here we have 15 languages and we can have up to 15 command sets. Well, we know how some languages are actually just variants of an existing language like English, US, Great Britain, and India and Spanish and uh, basically Spain and Mexico. So what that means is you could even adapt your app to some of the local terms that people would be using. Maybe there's a certain term that people would search in a different way in Spain compared to Mexico. That's right. So that's where again testing. F find people that are from those locales. Find people that understand these languages very well. Make them test it. Yeah. That's excellent. Okay. So here's what we looked at uh, in a rather short amount of time. We did the three steps necessary for defining the voice command for your app. That is creating the voice command file, and it was very easy. Registering that voice command file, and in both languages we saw it, and it was very easy both times. And then handling the voice command, that's really where all of the magic's going to happen in your app. That that's when Cortana has passed it off to you, and you determine what happens when a user comes in I think by way the of the monkey path. is here. Hey, already. look at this! The monkey is here. Hey, the monkey is with us today. The monkey today. is here. Hey, <laughs> monkey, dance. Monkey dance. Oh, it doesn't. We hey, haven't reached get that yet. section of the. Yeah. Yeah. We need to launch the app first. <laughs> so, but we're going to demo all we'll of get this there. in module six, right? You'll oh, see, yeah. get to see it in action. Yeah, so we'll far, we've seen the code, but you'll get to see it in action. You, you'll get to see the the rest of the code. The rest. We're of actually going to be writing two more projects and an entire phone. Let, let's just say this. Band to Cortana to phone to web Band. yes down to tweet mon uh, co command monkey rather right so <clears throat> okay well that's the the summary of what we've seen in this uh, module so thanks for uh, joining us and we're going to take a meal break now so we're going to be back in about an hour top of the hour yes yeah something like that top of the hour so we'll see you then. <laughs>
That's the nature of speech recognition. It's not just a demonstration of code, it's a demonstration of courage. Oh, yes, definitely. All day, this is all courage, you know? <laughs> I mean, Joe B does like 10 minutes on stage. We're doing a full day here. There you go, I mean, all day so long. This is great. Okay, so in this module, we're going to cover speech recognition in your apps, which is a, a good continuation of what you started in the previous module, where voice commands is basically speech recognition in the operating system itself to then launch your application and provide guidance on to how you want to launch the application. This time, in this module, so this is module four again, we've covered the introduction to Cortana, the speech synthesis to make the phone to uh, the device talk. Now uh, we then covered the Cortana integration and voice commands, which is going to continue in module six as well. And then now is speech recognition in your app. So this is the basically the third of uh, three uh, more, I would say, technical hands-on modules uh, covering the basics of speech, uh, the speech SDK. So what are we going to cover in this module? In this module, we will start with um, an understanding of in-app speech recognition and how to get started with the basics. Just like speech synthesis, with not too much code, you can actually easily do speech recognition in your apps using open dictation. And you'll see it's actually quite powerful. Then we're going to look at things like different grammars that we can use, programmatic list grammars and custom SRGS grammars, which is another W3C standard we're going to look at. Then we're going to take a look at optimizing your speech recognition, because speech recognition is one of those things where, um, well, you know, you're not always getting the results that you want. So how can you <laughs> tweak your app to make sure that you optimize the quality of the recognition and truly get the user's intent with as little frustration as possible? Then we're going to look at the globalization factor as well, because given that people are going to be speaking in different languages, different accents and everything, how can we define apps that will properly use um, different language rules and for different audiences around the world? And then finally, again, we're going to do a quick comparison across uh, different platforms. Now, uh, to be clear, this module is mostly just about Windows Phone 8.1 today. Uh, the, as you know, the text-to-speech features were available on both Windows Phone and Windows Store, but the speech recognition and the voice commands is something that's for Windows Phone 8.1 only. But again, it's all coming in Windows 10. So that means in Windows 10, phones and big windows, desktop, uh, and all these devices should bas basically have, it's going to be part of the default SKU of Windows 10 to have support in the SDK for speech recognition and voice commands as well. So, first of all, let's get started with a basic understanding of what in-app speech recognition means, how does it differ from voice commands, and such. So the way I like to kind of separate it is that in the end, it's all about the user talking to the device, to your application. How does it work? So there's kind of two contexts that we have to respond to. Whenever the user is outside of your app, so they can be in a different app, or they can be inside of the, the just the default operating system, if they want to launch your app and talk to it, then this is voice commands, also known as Cortana integration. But once your app is launched, or whether you launch the app with voice commands or not, you have the option of using speech recognition, where now the user is going to provide more input. So it could be a full conversation, continuing from voice commands, or you could be asking questions to the user, or maybe it's going to be for dictation. In that case, this is what we call speech recognition, or in-app speech recognition. Recognition can happen with or without the default UI. So as you can see on screen here, there's a default UI that's provided by Windows Phone. And that UI is that little pop-up that occupies like almost like the top half of the screen that whenever you go into recognition mode, it says like listening. I'm, I'm currently listening. So it's a good prompt for the user to understand, first of all, that um, the phone is listening to them. They have the option to, to cancel or go. Uh, from there. And the cool thing is also there's like a, a noise level as well. So if they're not talking and then they see that this little graph is like buzzing a lot, it tells you like there's a lot of background noise. So of course, needless to say, background noise will definitely reduce the quality of the voice rec the speech recognition. Uh, using that UI is a good idea because it provides a very consistent experience for your users. But you don't have to. If you want to create your own user interface or if you're trying to create an experience that's going to be a little more immersive, maybe following your brand or following your, the flow of your application, you can basically do recognition without popping that UI. And we're going to look at both examples in this module as well. Then next, we're going to look at uh, constraints, also known as grammars. Grammars basically help you narrow down the, the list of what users can say. When you think about it, it's very it's a very simple equation. You either 
recognize the entire language, but of course the rate of errors might be a little higher, so the accuracy is going to be a little lower. Or you can say, I'm only recognize a subset of that language. And what that means is my chances of getting it right are going to be much higher. This is what we do with constraints. And again, this is all for Windows Phone 8.1 only for now until Windows 10 comes. Now, uh, just like we, uh, we covered in uh, the text-to-speech, we need to have a capability to allow the speech SDK to work. This time, the microphone does make sense because all speech recognition actually goes through the microphone. So what that means is in your Windows Phone apps, any app that uses speech recognition will then need to have the microphone, just like you would already have it enabled if you wanted to use text-to-speech. You will get an access denied exception otherwise. So the first time you try to do this, if you get an access denied exception, it's a reflex right away. Don't feel bad. I make the mistake all the time. I create new apps and then, boom, access denied. I know, oh, I'm missing, an ex I'm missing a... Uh, capability. Uh, of course, if you want to use default grammars as well, which are the ones that are used for open dictation, web search, since those can recognize the entire spectrum of the language you're using, whether it's English, French, Italian, German, or whatever, then you're going to need internet access and therefore you're going to need the internet client server capability for that as well. Another thing that's really important is the privacy statement. Again, in the Microsoft world, we, do, we respect your privacy and we'll, we won't do anything with your data, including your voice. Your voice is part of who you are. We will not do anything or capture your voice until we have your consent. This is something that only has to be done once in the lifetime of a device. So the odds of your app encountering this error are actually quite slim. But of course, if, if a user gets a new phone, and then your app is the first thing they download. Well, first of all, congratulations. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's great. You know, and, and not even Cortana or anything. They, if they just jump in, launch your app, they don't even launch Cortana. They launch your app first, and then they try to use speech recognition. Then uh, you might you're going to get an exception. The exception is that the user has to accept the speech privacy statement. The way it works is the first time speech recognition is triggered, there's going to be a pop up that's going to, just like the one shown on screen here, that's going to show the what can I say. And then there's a privacy statement that says if you accept the words you speak and supporting data will be sent to provide only to improve the quality of the speech recognition service. It's all anonymous, but still it's part of privacy and we highly value your privacy and your user's privacy. So this means that the first time that a user tries to use any kind of speech recognition, including Cortana, they're going to be presented with that pop-up once they've accepted then you're good to go. You'll never get the exception again unless they wipe the phone or move to a new phone. So just to double check though, every app that uses speech recognition should check for that exception. So you can see the code on screen right here where there's a, a constant you can add which is called the, the privacy statement decline. It's that code right here. And then all you have to do is whenever you catch an exception, you can check to see if the H result matches that constant. Then it means the user either declined or never accepted it. Maybe it was never presented with the option. It's the same thing. So then you can present the dialogue simply telling them, well, sorry, but unless you accept for us to capture your voice, we can't really do speech recognition with you. And uh, that's it. So that's the privacy statement. Again, this is something that you will only deal with once in a lifetime of a device. So the chances of your app encountering this are pretty slim. Um, Next are, comes the constraints. So as I explained, the constraints are basically there to either allow you to use the full spectrum of a language or uh, to narrow down what can be said. There's two types of constraints you can use. There's the predefined grammars and there's custom grammars. The predefined grammars are basically there to, uh, it's the default, so the short message dictation is gonna be used, for example, for any kind of dictation from the user, usually less than 10 seconds. So don't expect the user to uh, start like reciting an entire text. This is not something that's there to, to allow you to type entire documents in a word processor, for example. You would have to do it in chunks. So short message dictation, as I said, usually try, 10 seconds is a max. Try to keep it shorter than that. And, um, and then there's the web search grammar. The web search grammar, very similar to the short message dictation, but the type of words that are used are more optimized for the kind of keywords people would, would do when they do a web search. So this is all handled by Bing in the cloud. You don't have to provide any parameters. You just choose one or the other so that if you're just allowing the user to dictate whatever they want, you would use short message dictation. 
But if it's something, something that's going to be used to trigger a web search, then it's encouraged to use the web search as well. Both will require an internet connection, of course, because we're using uh, advanced heuristics and uh, predictive uh, uh, algorithms in the cloud and uh, machine learning algorithms and everything. So the cloud and Cortana and Bing all working together to bring you the best recognition possible. Now, if you want to really drastically increase the quality of your recognition, then you're going to use custom grammars. And custom grammars are basically constraints that allow you to narrow down what a user can say. There's two types of custom grammars you can use. There's the programmatic lists, also called phrase lists, and there's also the custom uh, SRGS grammars. So let's look at uh, some of those. Uh, well, actually, first we're going to look at the basic recognition. So what we have on, on screen here is the basic code to do speech recognition. So as you can see, it's not very hard. What we have first is we create a speech recognizer. So just like we had a speech synthesizer, synthesizer, oh my God, I can't speak. <laughs> Second language, that's my, that's my cop out, you know? Um, so uh, now we have this speech recognizer that's actually easier to say. Um, <clears throat> and then we can define the topic constraint we wanna use. So in this case, we're using a topic constraint of type web search and we give it a name. We have to give a name to our constraint because then we 